Okay. And uh, they got a very good team. Mark's a great coach, and uh, they'll do very well. I mean, anxious to see how things go and uh, wish them the best of luck. But also, uh, I'd like to say from our point, it's been a privilege to uh, coach our guys, our young men. Very proud of our guys. I don't think uh, effort or uh, intensity was a part of their issue. We had to, we just turned the ball over a couple too many times. And uh, well, I'm still excited about the future. We got a lot of great young players coming back. We made a lot of great groundwork. And I'd also say a like, special thank you to those seniors, the seniors and what they've done for our program, the fifth year seniors and fourth year seniors, and what they've been able to accomplish with three ACC titles and. Uh, you know, three major uh, national championship in Orange Bowl and a bunch of bowl games in there and uh, the record which they've had over 39 and 3 in the last three years so looking forward to the foundation which they've helped lay and uh, you know our, and I say our goal was to compete and put our best foot forward we competed very well had a great chance the second half and we just started turning it over we had uh, one of the worst quarters we've had we turned it over four times in the third quarter and every time we were moving the football we had a chance to score points and but hey they made the plays which they had and they converted them back so you know, that, that's what ball is about. you got to take advantage of your opportunities. But my, like I said, I'm very proud of our team. Uh, hats off to Oregon. they got a great team, and uh, wish them the best of luck. Questions? We'll open up the floor for questions. We'll start over there to the left. Please state your name and media out. Tom Jones, Tampa Bay Times. Jimbo, if this was Jameis's last game, can you tell us what he meant to you and what he means to the program? Well, I mean, I think, you know, what he did and, and uh, as a competitor and what he does with his teammates. And, uh, you know, he's one of the great players in college, not only college football, college football history. And that to me, I mean, he's only had, had two years of what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, it's a tough day out there. He had, a, he, I thought he had a pretty good day for the most part. Played very well, a lot of reads and getting balls to guys, and, uh, and we just had to turn up about him. Got behind. We had 528 yards of offense, and uh, you know, but he is a tremendous player, tremendous competitor, tremendous person, and uh, you know, I have to wait and see what the future holds. We have any question on the right. Uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Uh -huh. it, it looked like after one of the turnovers, you and Jameis were having some words on the sideline. Can you share what was, we was trying to was, The guy fell down, and I was trying to tell him, he was trying to tell me how the guy fell down. He gets animated, but he's not, wasn't words, wasn't words at all. One of our receivers actually on the play, which he slipped and which he fumbled, the guy fell down on the route when it had been wide open. And I, I couldn't see it from there. He saw it, which is right, exactly what happened. They come over, and uh, that was it. Were you trying to get him to, to calm down at all there a little bit? Or? Yeah, I mean, just, but he always gets animated like that when he talks. He does when he's playing good. I mean, that's just his nature. Question on the left. Dave Reardon, Dave Reardon, Honolulu Star Advertiser. Uh, fair to say if there was any shred of uh, anything about Oregon being soft that that's dispelled today? Yeah, they're, very, they're a very good football team all the way across. From offense, defense, line, and their whole team. They got a very good football team. We have any additional questions for Coach Fisher up front? GWilliamsMoreChan.com. Coach, usually throughout the season you were able to adjust pretty good in the second half. Defensively, that obviously didn't happen today. Why was it so difficult to I think adjust the momentum of the game and after turnovers. See, it was different because when turnovers come, they change momentum. And momentum is different than making adjustments when guys are driving the football. And, uh, you know, if we put the ball in the end zone offense, it could really help their offense. I mean, our defense out in a lot of situations. Transition defense, we didn't, we didn't excel at. I thought at the end of the first half, they were playing very well. I, I felt very comfortable coming out in the second half. They had made a few plays, but I thought defensively we had played pretty well. And I think the momentum, because of the way they got the ball in the turnover situation, I think was the key, and that's the difference. Can we have a question on the left? Thank you. Uh, Tom D'Angelo, Palm Beach Post. Jimbo, you talked about coaching seniors in this year. Just what do you think you, when you reflect back, when you have time over the last two years and not in, in a 29 game winning streak, what, what will that mean to you? And when we have time to really think about what that? Well, I think maybe in, a, in a, another month or so, a few weeks. But, you know, you think about it's probably the second longest win streak in modern football history since, you know, and uh, it was a great run. I mean, what our guys accomplished and what they've been able to play and, and do and the, the quality of games and what they've been able to, to play in. It was an extremely great run, and hopefully we can put together another one. Okay, we're now joined by Mario Edwards Jr. and ja Jameis Winston. We have one question from the man in the red. Oh, no, sorry, guys. Oh, we're in the back left. Jimbo, uh, Sam G. Real Clear Sports. Uh, even though you guys were out here last year. Sorry, what was it? Oh, okay, back. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, even though you guys were out here last year, do you, do you feel like you're at a little bit of disadvantage coming all the way out here to West Coast again to play this game? No, not really. I mean, a bowl game, that's fun. Hey, we don't ever get to come out to this part of the country very much. I don't think it was. I think we but we were fresh and ready to play, and our guys like coming out here, and you know, L.A. is a great town. I, I, don't, I don't feel that way at all. I think very fortunate because we don't get to come out here and the honor to play in the Rose Bowl 
you know, you don't get that opportunity coming from that part of the country and those leagues very much. And it was a great honor to be here. We, I don't think that is not at all. We have a question up front here. Sure. <clears throat> For Jimbo and the players, you guys have been a team that's been able to come back in the second half. When did you feel like the wind started kind of getting out of your sails a little After bit? about the fifth turnover. <laughs> I mean, it had nothing to do with moving the ball. I mean, that's, we felt very good. Even when we were 25, 20, went up 31, we were driving right back again and got it, you know, and, and had the fumble. And then even when we got 38, we were still moving the ball to the midfield because, you know, 17, that's three possessions. You get a stop, a turnover, get it back to two real quick, we were moving the ball. And then once it got after the 45, you know, so we just, you know, it was just, it just pressing in. Then we really started pressing and, uh, and making the, you know, didn't let the ball stay in our hands and turned it over. But, Again, felt very comfortable with what we did, our game plan, uh, execution of the guys. We just, you know, we got to hold on the football. Turnovers are the most critical thing, and the outcomes get us. Um, I guess I thought it was over, or we couldn't come back uh, when it got up into the 40s as well. But uh, like Coach Jimbo said, it wasn't, you know, it was just us, uh, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot, you know, not taking advantage of all the opportunities that we had to make plays offensively and defensively. So. You know, eventually it caught up with us. It ain't never over, honestly. It's never over. Uh, we just got beat, uh, turned the ball over too many times. But it still ain't over yet. We can go play again, honestly. We have a question up in the middle. Uh, this is for Jameis, Paul Burkham, and CNN. Your plans, school, the NFL, baseball? I'm focused on that at all. You know, I'm looking forward to next season and uh, playing baseball. So. Uh, I'm just trying to get better every day. Okay, another question in the middle. Uh, Jimbo Arians, just Asher Wild on WCTV. Jameis and Mario, can you guys talk about the record you guys went on the 29 game winning streak? Put it in perspective as it comes to an end tonight at the Rose Bowl. Um, I mean, we made history. It was something great to do. Uh, it was something that you know had never been done in Florida State history, and uh, you know we did it. And to be a part of history, Coach Jimbo constantly talks about history. And, you know, when you come back in your reunion, you'll be able to sit down and talk about all these great moments that you've uh, experienced by being here. And for it to come to an end, you know, is definitely uh, a bitter taste in our mouth. But, you know, like he said after the game, it, it, it's a learning learning curve for us. So we learn a lot of things from this game. Uh, I mean, I just <clears throat> got to say thank you to the, the teams that held that record. You know, and it's, they were a, a very special team, but you know, this is just not the right way to, to end that, end that, that that record because we beat ourselves. You know, so uh, you know, anything is possible. The question up in the front. Jameis Steve Futterman from CBS News. I want to know you've had this wonderful streak of you had never lost a game until tonight. Been some great moments. Now you on the other side of it. How much does something like this hurt? Uh, your human it hurts better than whatever you can imagine. But the the, the good thing is uh, it, we we live to fight another day. You know uh, we got we got tons of great futures, and uh, no one no one likes to lose, man. I mean that's losing's really not in my vocabulary to be honest with you. But you know uh, we fell short at a, we fell short today, and uh, got a man up. Go ahead and just get better every day, you know. I just hope that uh, we can learn from this because I ain't felt this way in a long time, I've got to say. So there's something to smile on. No question on the left-hand side. Uh, for, for Mario, you said you learned uh, from, from this game. What did you learn from this game? Uh, you know, you know, during the whole season, we, we would, uh, you know, put ourselves in difficult difficult binds that we always fought our way out of. And, you know, you know, like my, my dad would always say, it only catches up with you when it catches up with you. And, you know, tonight was just one of those nights where, you know, I, I think we let the points add up too much and we didn't make enough uh, turnovers on defense or enough plays on defense. And, you know, it, it's just what we learned is that, you know, you got to start fast, starting slow against an athletic team like Oregon. And, you know, uh, Mariota wasn't, wasn't good for us tonight. We'll take a question right here in the front. Hey, James, Michael Duarte with uh, Newsweek and the Latin Times. Coach, we already heard from Coach Reuter, but can you walk us through that fourth and five play and what you saw and what happened kind of when you slipped and then fumbled? Uh, you know, I was just trying to make a play. You know, I should have got the ball out of my hands earlier. 
and uh, you know, it was just it was just an unfortunate play, man. You know that I never thought that I would slip, throw the ball backwards, man. It's just it's a very unfortunate, fortunate play, you know. But that's football, you know. Uh, it was fourth down, so obviously I'm trying to compete, trying to compete my tail off to try to try to get us in a good situation. But uh, just a, a very unfortunate play, man. It's that's probably gonna be able to come on, man, or something. That was crazy. <laughs> we have a question from the middle on the left. Leland Gordon with the Miami Herald. Uh, Jameis, the journey from Hueytown High School to right here in this big press conference, playing in this big football game, and winning all those games all along. Do you still remember being that kid back at Hueytown High School and uh, the journey that you've taken to get here and reflect on how you've changed as an individual up to this point? Definitely. No, I, I remember how I was, and no one barely knew who I was to now. But you know, I, this everything I've been through, everything that <clears throat> I've experienced has just made me a, a better person. You know, and uh, especially that's why I'm, I'm so happy I came to Florida State. You know, because I got a, got a coach that loved me. You know, and I got teammates that love me. You know, and it's it's no way else to go but up. You know, when you got great people surrounding you, you have a great family. But, I mean, it ain't over yet, you know. So hopefully I got a long life ahead of me. I don't plan on dying today. <laughs> we have a question in the back, right? Coach, I wanted to ask you, as much as you can prepare for Oregon's tempo, is it a completely different animal when it's actually on the field with you? And, and just speak to, in the second half, not only did they convert the turnovers, but how quickly they did. No, I really don't think the tempo was as big a factor as it was. I think our guys adjusting got calls very quickly. This is the momentum of the game, and I don't say that out of disrespect to Oregon. I thought their tempo is very fast, but Clemson and Auburn go at that same pace too. And uh, we played, and there's some other teams we do. But I don't think the tempo was the difference. I mean, they executed at a higher level and got momentum in the game and, and just you know, made good plays. But it was a part of it, but I don't think it was a huge, huge part of that. I, re I really don't. I don't say that out of disrespect, but because you play so many of those teams now, everybody's no huddle. I mean, it's it's more the, the norm than it is, you know, the, the unknown, as I say. But uh, it was just their execution, in my opinion, was the key to it. And so with that, I mean, the, the quickness of their execution. Yes, I mean, they took advantage of shots and made plays and, and you know, got momentum. See, that's why I keep – in college games and any game, momentum. And the turnovers create momentum and bad momentum, and you're able to, to feed on that. And that's – if you go look at any game or any sport, how the swings and, you know, the momentum swings are critical, and it's hard to change it back, especially when you play good people like uh, Morgan. We have time for two more questions on the left there. Hey, Mark Myers, Associated Press Radio for Janus. There